Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question about Bradley J. Steiner and what I thought about his idea is that people uh, will generally get big the quickest if they just work hard on the basic exercises and then fill in a, a little bit of extra volume here or there with isolation movements. Uh, so let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. Uh, actually, I am familiar with Bradley J. Steiner. I don't think he has that much material out there, but I've seen a little bit, and a lot of it he references like Reg Parks, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about here, um, because that is what he references, Reg Parks' basic style of training. Um, you know what, and the scary thing is, is that people even need to ask about this today. The idea that this is some sort of radical or revolutionary concept, when this is the way all the biggest and strongest men in the world trained for decades, it's only been in the last couple generations that people deviated from this in any way. And when people still train that way, they usually get better results. Uh, the only exception being people who are mega dosing drugs. Um, for those not familiar with Reg Park, Reg Park was Arnold Schwarzenegger's hero. Uh, he's who inspired Arnold uh, to do what he did. And the guy was almost as impressive as Arnold was in his physique. In some ways, uh, some people consider better, but the guy was brutally strong. I mean, he was not all show, no go. We're talking about a guy you know, who could squat 600 pounds, deadlift 700 pounds, uh, who happened to have 20 inch arms and ripped abs on top of it. Uh, again, most people I think today, unless they're chasing some freakish bodybuilder dream, uh, would, would look at someone like Reg Park and go, okay, that dude was pretty damn impressive um, by various standards, athletic, aesthetics, whatever it is they're looking at. Um, and again, he was a guy who played Hercules in a bunch of the movies. The old Hercules movies, the guy with the beard, that was Reg Park. All right, so what sort of training does he mean, training heavy on the basics? Uh, it was full body workouts, three days a week. Reg Park believed in doing, uh, coming in, doing some sort of squat, some sort of deadlift, bench press, some kind of overhead press, rows of some type, maybe one set for abs, maybe some arms or whatever. Call it a day. Now, that's a lot of work to be done in one day, and it's important to note that we are talking about a lot of training volume. Uh, now, Reg Park was noted for 5 by 5s but it's also important for us to remember the sort of 5 by 5s that Reg Park was doing is not the full sets of cross that we talk about today, and it wasn't the peak sets of Bill Pearl. It was kind of a hybrid in between, um, and he's the one who really popularized the concept. Other people were doing it, but he popularized it. And what he would have people do, or what he did, he would come in and he would do two warm-up sets where he would ramp up to what was a fairly heavy weight for him on five sets of five, or five rep sets. Meaning, um, if he knew he could do three sets of five with 300 pounds and the last set would be really hard, would be hard work, that's what he would do. So he would ramp up, he would do some warm-up sets, meaning... Uh, maybe 20% increases or so. So start with about 40% below your working set, do a five rep set warm up, increase it 20%, do another five rep set warm up, then go to your work sets and do three sets of five. Now, from a volume perspective, uh, if you look at the different compounds he selected right there, every muscle in your body is getting some overlap of exercises. All right, everything is getting some overlap except maybe biceps, uh, arguably though on the deadlift because uh, squats and deadlifts work everything in the, the lower body. Your quads, hamstrings, calves, glutes, everything get worked by both. Uh, both work the spinal erectors, both work the, the abs. Uh, deadlifts work the lats. Well, the rows also work the lats too, so then you've got overlap. Overhead press and bench pressing work the delts. They work the chest, they work the triceps, uh, just in slightly different ratios. The overhead press works less chest, but it still works your chest. So everything is getting, other than again, maybe biceps, everything is getting at least 15 heavy work sets, working reps from two different exercises. That's 30 reps. So you have 30 reps of serious work using fairly heavy weights, probably somewhere in the range of 80 to 85% of your max being used for 30 reps every workout on every uh, you know on every body part you're not going to not get big on that I mean again that sort of volume that's hypertrophy volume all right three sets of 10 is 30 reps this is 30 reps of slightly heavier weight than you'd be using with three sets of 10 when you think about the overlap of exercises there so uh, yeah I mean that's kind of your sweet spot I tell people usually about 25 to 30 reps 
of, of serious work on any muscle in a workout is enough to stimulate solid muscle growth. Well, that's what this is doing. His basic protocol puts you right in that sweet spot. And you're doing it three times a week, which means you have maximum muscle protein synthesis up time. So yeah, a method like this is gonna make you get big. It's gonna make you get strong. Reg Park's methods worked. It worked for him, it worked for tons of other people, it worked for guys all the way up through Arnold's era. Uh, the only reason people stopped doing this is they experimented more when drug doses started getting higher and higher and higher. But plenty of guys have stacked on plenty of size doing this sort of training. Uh, big, heavy, basic exercises. He did mostly barbell work. Big barbell work, that's how you get big. That's the easiest way to do so, and you do so while getting strong. And even your core and everything gets worked because all this standing work, the overhead pressing that he's talking about is standing, squats, deadlifts, overhead press, that's all standing work. Your core and stabilizers and everything get worked. I mean, guys talk about wanting to have a well-developed midsection. Uh, they want well-developed obliques, abs, uh, everything else. Well, all that standing heavy work builds all of that up. It will build those. It will make them firmer. It will make them harder. It will hypertrophy all those little small muscles unavoidable and that's why guys like that are like you shouldn't need to do a lot of extra ab work one set's enough that's what he advocated that's what guys like reg park would, would have you come in and do um just enough to finish them off and you know what it's the same with any other body part because again let's say you're coming in and only doing rows well uh, 15 reps on moderately heavy rows every workout three times a week is a decent amount for the biceps but probably not a bad idea if you want big biceps to maybe do something else for your biceps. Not a problem, do some incline curls. Uh, do some straight bar curls. And as that's what I would point out to people. If you're already getting all that work in the pronated position, uh, that's already handling all of that angle for your bicep brachialis and everything. Find something that turns the palm completely up, an incline curl, straight bar curl, an Olympic bar. Uh, those things are gonna hit the muscle from a different angle that it's being worked is going to put more direct work on it and it should help finish it off and, and build them up you know so if your biceps are lacking do that same thing uh, with a method like that if you find that all the rowing and overhead pressing and stuff isn't building your side delt quite as much as you would like fine do some uh, laterals get a dumbbell and do some laterals for them it's not that hard you know and that's the thing what people need to understand when we start talking about doing hard work on the big basic exercises that doesn't mean you can't do a little isolation work. In fact, it doesn't even mean that you shouldn't. All it means is that 95% of your overall muscle growth is going to come from the big heavy compounds. That's the work that gets it done. And it doesn't take you hours and hours to utilize that stuff to stimulate maximum growth. Um, and I would consider the sort of volume even Reg Park did to be nearly maximum volume. That's about all someone should even be considering doing. That's the most you should even be considering doing. Uh, because that's a pretty intense amount of work just due to the fact of so much muscle overlap in different body parts from doing all these big heavy uh, uh, barbell movements. Most of them work so many muscles that between the combination of them, every muscle is get, having multiple exercises working. In some cases, as many as three or four different exercises for three work sets every workout done three times a week. Um, you shouldn't have many lagging points there. If you do, it's just genetic weak spots. And you know what? Those can be brought up with direct work. Uh, not really a big deal. Not that hard. Um, but people get these ideas that when someone says you should be doing mostly big, moderately heavy barbell movements, get big, strong, powerful, thick, uh, that that means that you shouldn't do any isolation work. Well, in some cases, people don't need isolation work. But it doesn't mean that you can't do some. Uh just to kind of fill in your weak points a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but people get these dogmatic ideas that people who promote barbell work are saying you should never do a curl. Uh, when I would say it's the opposite. You know what? I think incline curls uh, reduce the chance of injury of tearing a bicep on the deadlift. So if you're going to use the deadlift as a primary mass builder, it might actually be a good idea to do incline curls. And incline curls are incidentally uh, of many of the, the guys from the 50s, 60s, 70s, many of them felt it was the best bicep exercise ever for development as well. Hey, you can kill two birds with one stone. And that's what you should be looking at. That's the only thing you should be factoring in when picking isolation movements is 
will this isolation movement give me significant benefits? And in the case of the incline curl, yeah, it's going to build your biceps up. Might be a weak point for you. Number two, it can be an injury prevention tool for the deadlift. Well, hey, that makes it doubly useful. Maybe I should do those. You know, sometimes people don't just use a little common sense with this stuff and stop and think these things through. Well, yeah, if there's an isolation movement that will help build a weak point and can help me uh, build up a weak point in a way that will reduce my chances of injury, well, that sounds like a damn fine exercise. Maybe I should be doing that. Doesn't matter that it's not a big, heavy movement. It serves a purpose, uh, and a purpose beyond just vanity. And so that's a double win. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.